So, today I'm going to talk about MetalLB. MetalLB is a CNCF sandboxed project that allows us uh, to have services of type load balancer or on bare metal. Some quick words about me. I'm Federico, I'm part of this uh, networking team uh, at Red Hat in charge of making the OpenShift platform suitable for uh, telco workloads. Uh, during my time there, I contributed to a variety of Kubernetes-related projects and network-related projects, and I've been maintaining MetalLB since a couple of years. <clears throat> In order to understand how MetalLB works, I'm going to introduce or reintroduce uh, the concept of services. Um, Let's say that you have your application, uh, it's running in multiple replicas inside the cluster and you want to load balancer the traffic directed to those uh, endpoints. And the construct that Kubernetes gives us is a service. You have an internal accessible uh, virtual IP, the cluster IP, a given pod can access the cluster IP and the Kubernetes networking um, will load balance the traffic uh, among all these different endpoints. It's a bit more complex than this. You have um, various uh, fields like IP family, protocols and ports and stuff like that, but that's the, that's the gist of it. But what if you have your application still running on the cluster, uh, still uh, uh, running in multiple replicas, and you want to advertise it outside of the cluster. One of the constructs that we have is a service of type load balancer. Um, this is taken from the Kubernetes documentation. A service of type load balancer exposes the service externally using a cloud provider's load balancer. Not, provi not port and cluster IP services uh, are automatically created. The emphasis here is the fact that it leverages a cloud provider slot balancer. And what does this slot balancer give us? Um, it gives us uh, an external IP in first instance, something that we can uh, give out that is accessible from uh, the external network, the internet, um, and that can um, be given out to reach our application. Um, let me turn the laser on. The second thing that uh, that uh, cloud provider gives us is the load balancing part. So you have somebody ex uh, trying to access your virtual IP from outside and the cloud provider's network infrastructure will do the multiplexing of that traffic reaching the, the virtual IP among the, all the nodes of the clusters. Something that I want to emphasize here, once the traffic reach the node, all the rest is handled by the, by the clusters CNI. The role of the load balancer ends when the traffic reach one of the nodes. So a service of type load balancer gives us a couple of things. One is a stable IP to reach our application from outside. We can give it out, uh, uh, around, we can ping a DNS entry to it. And the other part is the load balancing part across the different nodes. Now let's have a look at what happens on bare metal and in bare metal we don't have anyone giving us a, a, an external IP so the first thing that happens is the fact that our external IP stays impending we don't have an IP uh, to give out but even if we had another part that is missing is that part that network infrastructure that uh, um, redirect the traffic to, towards the virtual IP to the nodes to the clusters so that the CNI can do its part. And these two particular problems, assigning the IP, routing the traffic to the given nodes, uh, are the problems that MetalLB uh, tries to address. MetalLB is a load balancer implementation for bare metal Kubernetes clusters using standard routing protocols. Um, the first thing I want to mention about MetalLB is that sadly, or at least it was uh, it was weird to me to discover that MetalLB is not a network load balancer, meaning that it doesn't implement that part that takes the connection 
and redirects it directly to, to the nodes of the cluster. But this doesn't mean that it's useless. So let's have a look at those two issues and uh, try to see how MetaLab solves them uh, by leveraging the external network infrastructure um, in, I think, a quite elegant way. So the first part is the address assignment. <coughs> it's probably the most boring and less networky part. We have a regular Kubernetes controller, listen for the configuration and the services, give them an IP or a claim to the IP when the services are deleted. But what IPs are we talking about? Here we are not in a cloud environment. Uh, the only bit that is in control of the infrastructure is the cluster administrator. So MetaLB must be instructed of which IPs are available. This is done via this um, IP address pool CRD. You can have a CIDR uh, set of IPs. You can have a range. You can have IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. Um, <coughs> you can pin a service to a specific IP. This is done in two ways. The spec dot load balancer IP uh, field, which is now deprecated, but still working, or an annotation. This is how you ask, hey, I want my IP to have this particular IP. Or you can ask for some IPs from a given pool, still in the, in the, in the service definition. Or uh, from a cluster administrator's point of view, if you implement uh, some kind of multi-net tenancy, you can say this particular address pool is reserved only to this subset of the namespace. Or you can do even more and say this particular set of IPs are is reserved only to this particular set of services. Um, a couple of things to note. No selector means that the IP address pool can be applied to all the services. We have a priority field that needs to be t taken care of. Um, if we have a service that asks for a specific IP, for like this one, for example, but in the uh, pool configuration it says uh, you, you can't have that IP, then the service, uh, the service IP will stay pending. Um, and then let's talk about uh, the address advertisement part, which is the more network heavy part. So again, we have somebody tries to uh, trying to access uh, the virtual IP from outside and we need to find a way to attract that service to our nodes and we have something in the middle. Um, and another thing that MetaLB does and should do uh, is to honor the local traffic policy, meaning that if we had the pods running only on the subset of the nodes, it, MetaLB uh, must be smart enough to attract the traffic only to the, those nodes where uh, an endpoint is running. There are two ways to attract the service, two uh, advertisement modes. One is L2. Uh, it's uh, quite simple. It requires uh, some, uh, some gymnastic in the network or to have the client and the cluster to, to be in the same uh, subnet. And BGP, which is more complex and more powerful and requires the interaction with a BGP-enabled router. Let's start with L2 mode. Again, uh, the easiest way is to have the client on the same subnet of the, of the cluster. The way it, work, uh, it works is more or less similar to what Keep Alive does. Keep Alive D does. Um, you have the client, uh, tries to know who is owning this particular IP, sends out an ARP request. The ARP request gets to all the nodes of the cluster. Uh, MetaLB for a given service elects a leader the only uh, node that is going to reply to that ARP request that is on per service basis, different service might have different leaders. The ARP reply gets to the client and then the client is able to reach the, the service. Um, one thing to note is that MetaLB replies with the MAC address of the interface it receives uh, the ARP uh, request from. So it, uh, if it has multiple interfaces, it uh, still work. What happens when a node fails? Failover happens. The new a new leader is elected, sends out a gratuitous ARP, reaches the client. The client is able to reach the, node, the service again. The traffic gets to the node. All the rest is done by the CNI. Um, again, couple of nodes. Uh, 
it listens to all the interfaces unless you put a interface selector <coughs> we don't assign uh, the ip to any interfaces on the host on, on on the host uh, only one node is active so it's not really load balancing it's more uh, a load balancer implementation a, a load balancer service implementation uh, when a failover happens, a uh, new election, uh, gratuitous ARP, uh, the configuration is pretty easy. Address pools and a simple L2 uh, advertisement. And this is the simplest. This is to say, hey, I want all the services to be advertised via L2. You can say, I want only the service where, uh, whose uh, IP is coming from this set of IP address pools to be advertised via um, L2. Um, and we can also have a node selector. So if you have your uh, only a subset of the nodes belonging to a given subnet, uh, if you use a node selector, MetaLDB will elect the leader among uh, the subnets of, of the nodes and matching the node selector um, to, to reply to the ARP request. And you can specify a set of interfaces. So if you have a fancy uh, interfaces com combination that might uh, cause troubles. This is how you select only a subset of the interfaces to instruct Metal B to, uh, to reply uh, from. A um, couple of notes, the interface selector doesn't influence the way the leader uh, is selected. If you are choosing one, uh, if you specify uh, an interface selector with no existing in interfaces, the service won't be announced. Uh, if you don't specify any address put selector, it means that the L2 advertisement is applied to all the IP address pools. If you have multiple L2 advertisements, those L2 advertisement uh, matching a given IP address pool are merged together. The interfaces are the union of the selected interfaces, the nodes are the unions of the selected nodes. So again, with L2 you don't get real load balancing, uh, slightly similar to keep alive D, uh, but it works. BGP mode. Um, BGP, this is taken from the RFC. Uh, the primary function of a BGP speaking system is to exchange network reachability information with other BGP systems. So this is exactly what we, what we need. We need to exchange the reachability of our service IP through our nodes. So in BGP mode, each node acts as a mini router. It establishes a BGP session up front with, a, with an external router. MetaLDB must be instructed uh, of the presence of that router. When we want to announce a service, uh, these BGP messages are sent to the router saying, if you want to reach the service IP, then the next stop is the IP of the node. And the same for, for this one. Um, so then the, the router's routing table will look something like this uh, for to reach the service. You have this set of next stops. And if the client tries to reach the, the service, now we get real load balancing uh, given by the router. It's ECMP routes, equal, uh, equal cost. Um, it's active, active. <clears throat> so the traffic will go sometimes on one node, some other times to the other. Uh, once the traffic gets to the node, all the rest is done by the by the CNI. Um, and of course, you can have more complex scenarios. You can have multiple routers. You can have spine and leave routers uh, and all the fancy stuff that uh, BGP allows us to do. How to do the configuration? We still need an IP address pool to give the IP to the to the service. And then we need to instruct MetaLDB about the presence of a, of a given peer uh, with the address, the autonomous system number of MetaLDB and of the peer, and some other details about the BGP session. Um, and then you need to tell MetaLDB to advertise uh, the services via BGP. This is the simplest way as L2. Uh, an empty one just tells MetaLDB to announce all the services uh, via BGP. But BGP offers uh, a lot of extra configurations. Um, we have a node selector for the BGP session. If your router is reachable only from a subset of the nodes and you don't want 
to waste resources in trying to connect to a router that is not reachable. With the node selector, the BGP session will be established only, uh, by a subset of the nodes. We have communities and local preferences that allow uh, fancy BGP configurations, uh, like for example, <coughs> specifying the uh, fine-grained uh, slash 32 uh, router to the local router and the coarse grained uh, to the to the external router. We support BFD. Um, BGP max failover detection is around three seconds. BFD is much faster than that. And by specifying a BFD profile, we will have the BGP session backed up by a BFD session um, to, to uh, provide faster uh, failover and uh, link broken link detection. Um, as much as with L2, we can specify, uh, we can tell MetaLab to advertise by BGP only the IPs coming from a given uh, pool of IPs. Um, we have node selectors if we want to advertise uh, this is orthogonal to the to the BGP section session uh, node selector, uh, but we want to advertise some IPs only from a subset of the nodes. Uh, we have a node selector in the BGP advertisement, and we can say I want to advertise this set of uh, IPs only to a subset of the peers instead of uh, to all of them. Um, Again, some quick notes, uh, no IP address pool selector means uh, the BGP advertisement uh, is applied to all the services. Uh, when you have multiple BGP advertisement matching the same IP address pool, they are combined together and applied together. Um, re quick recap about BGP mode, you now get active, active load balancing. Uh, it's handled by the external routers, not by MetaLab, but it's still uh, active active and load balancing um, we need uh, some extra configuration we support bfd uh, one thing to note uh, is that as of today uh, more on this later uh, but metal b is not meant to accept incoming routes so it refuses incoming routes by default uh, we have a ton of uh, configurations uh, not selector uh, we support ibgp and ebgp single and multi-hop and of course, all of these can mix together. Um, and MetaLab is meant to be uh, simple to configure when you deal with the default. You just configure an IP address pool and MTL2 and BGP advertisement. Um, but we can also have complex configurations that can be achieved with all the configuration knobs that we uh, just uh, spoke about. And those extra knobs came out from uh, long discussions with the communities and with the MetaLab users, and they evolved over time. Um, so for example, by, with the current configuration, we can express uh, some nice things like announcing both via L2 and, and via BGP a given service, uh, announcing via L2, but only from a subset of the nodes and only from a given interface, or announcing only to a given BGP peer and only from the nodes with a given label uh, and so on. Uh, announcing all the services to the peers but only some services to a subset of the peers and <coughs> announcing uh, all the services of a given tenant only via a specific BGP session. So this is to say that uh, now MetalB has a very comprehensive configuration that should cover the majority of the of the needs, uh, and if not, just come and file an issue. Um, Say that uh, I'm gonna talk a bit about the architecture. Let's have a look under the hood of MetalLB. Um, we have the two categories of pods. One is the controller. The controller is the boring one that listens from for uh, the services, the IP pools allocates the IPs to the services, gets back the IP when the services die, uh, so it, the, that IP can be uh, given to another, another service. The speaker on the, other on the other hand is a daemon set, an instance per node, it's a host network pod, it has to mess up with the host network uh, and it handles the IP announcement. 
In L2, we have an ARP responder. The speaker listens for services, uh, does the leader election for each service, and creates an ARP responder for each service. On BGP, we have several implementations. We have the native one that uh, was the original one. It's a subset of the BGP protocol implemented in Go. It listens for services plus Metal B configuration and uh, reacts to the BGP session according to the to what it has to do, which is what we said in the previous uh, slides. And then there is the FRR mode. Uh, this is something that we introduced said a couple of uh, a couple of summers ago. FRR is a real router software router implementation. It is a very popular project, rock solid, super stable. It uh, implements a variety of networking protocols, including BGP and BFD, among the others. Um, and um, FRR mode is the, the current BGP implementations that we are investing our efforts into. In FRR mode, the speaker listens for the, for the services, for the Metal B configuration. Um, yeah. It generates an FRR configuration uh, and reloads the FRR configuration inside inside FRR. So FRR can interact with the router and implement all the protocols for us. And by doing this switch, now all it, all it takes to implement something new that is already supported by FRR and FRR supports basically everything is to find the right uh, FRR configuration and to translate the Kubernetes API into the right FRR configuration. This allowed us to implement BFD and IPv6 support uh, quite quickly, for example. And again, the native Go implementation is more on, under maintenance mode. This is where uh, we are putting uh, the majority of our efforts. And this was more or less what MetalB is about uh, until today, uh, how it evolved uh, based on the user requests and, and so on. But now I want to talk also about what's next. Uh, of course, I can't foresee the long distant future, uh, but I can talk briefly about what we've been working on the last uh, six months, uh, which is something that came out from uh, community requests. Um, this is something that come uh, come pretty often. Basically, there are users saying, uh, "Hey, now that you are running FRR, FRR is a full-fledged router. Uh, can you do this and this and this with MetalB? Can you accept routes into your nodes uh, with MetalB?" And I tend to push back because MetalB's purpose is only to announce services. But given this was something that users requested together with running uh, multiple FRR instances on the same node, we started thinking uh, about ways to share the same FRR instance between MetalB, but also to be able to use it uh, for other purposes. And this is efficient because you have only one single FRR, you have only one single BGP session with the router that can do multiple things. Um, so this is now available as an experimental mod in, uh, in MetalB. The way it works is you have a series of API, the usual API. Uh, now we have a new CRD FRR configuration, which is read by this FRR daemon that can be deployed as a standalone or uh, as part of MetalB to the cluster. This new demo reads this new FRR configuration, and then FRR is configured to interact with the router. But at the same time, a user can come and apply an FRR configuration that is compatible with a Metal B, the one generated by MetalB, to do more stuff. And this is FRR Kubernetes. FRR Kubernetes is a spin-off uh, of MetalB. It's deployed directly by MetalB. Um, if you choose the experimental FRR Kubernetes mode, um, and it can also deploy it as a standalone component. Um, now I'm going to show a very quick demo. Um, first, I want to describe the, uh, the development environment that I'm going to show. It's a kind cluster. 
you have each node connected via the Docker network. Each node is a Docker container. And we also have an external Docker container that is running FRR that is mimicking an external router. And now I'm going to show the demo. So this is the demo. Um, it's a kind cluster. Uh, and I also have uh, an extra container, which is FRR, which is representing the router. The way I spawn up this is uh, we have this env dev env command in the in the MetalLB repo that does all the setup for us. If you want to tinker with MetalLB, you can specify the backend, native BGP FRR, uh, sorry, native FRR or FRR Kubernetes. Uh, yeah, and you can specify the protocol you want to test, uh, BGP or L2. With BGP, it will spin up the external FRR container. Um, so, and we can also have a look at the external configuration. Um, the external container is meant to be peered with the uh, three nodes. These are the IPs of the three nodes, and it's trying to advertise uh, a couple of, uh, of prefixes, which MetalLB doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't want to receive. If I do summary, then the status is active, meaning that the external container is trying to connect. And it's not connecting because we don't have a configuration yet. Um, let's have a look at the configuration. BGP peer, the IP address of the external container, an IP address pool, and a an empty BGP advertisement, which is the bare minimum configuration that we can have. And I can also have a look at the services. And we have an Nginx instance with external IP pending because we don't have a configuration yet. But now I can do this and create this configuration and then our external IP has um, uh, uh, has a value so now MetalB will try to MetalB first is connected now the session is up and if I have a look oh sorry Too many commands. Um, so then the virtual IP is reachable from all the three nodes. And now I want to also quickly, quickly show the, um, mm -mm, the new FRR configuration. So this is something that will tell the FRR daemon to accept all the routes, which is something that MetalB doesn't allow by default. This configuration is going to be merged with the MetalLB one. We have a node selector only on kind worker. And I want to show the routes. Now, then I created the configuration and the external router is still trying to inject those routes and because of this extra configuration now these routes are available um, this is it for the demo you can run it locally again the development environment um, uh, environment is pretty easy to spin up um, the last thing I want to mention is that we are trying to maintain uh, MetalLB as a contributor-friendly project. Um, there is this uh, community and contributing uh, section in the official website. We are active in the MetalLB dev and MetalLB Slack channel on the Kubernetes Slack. Uh, we try to keep the list of issues uh, well-groomed with help wanted. Uh, good first issue if you want to work on something or you think that a feature is missing just file an issue we'll try to engage a discussion um, MetalLB is not a huge project but you can have an impact 
on a good amount of uh, community users that are using it in their home labs or even in big enterprise environments. Uh, so it's a nice way to get in the Kubernetes ecosystem uh, and contributing to something Kubernetes related without uh, being uh, too much intimidated. Um, and I'm on the Kubernetes Slack, feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to guide you into your first contribution. And with that, I guess we can wrap it up. So MetalLB um, addresses two major tasks. One is the IP allocation. The other one is the IP advertisement. With L2, you don't get real load balancing, uh, only failure detection, uh, but not uh, uh, high availability. BGP is more complex and more powerful, but it requires the interaction with the router. Uh, we have upstream do documentation. Uh, again, we try to keep it up to date. Uh, we have a troubleshooting guide and a few tools. And also, if you want to learn more about FRR, their website is um, very well documented. With this, I'm done. Uh, again, if you want to reach me out, my Twitter handle is Fede Paul. Fede Paul is my uh, Gmail handle. I'm Fede Paul on the Kubernetes Luck channel, LinkedIn, whatever. If you want to ask me questions question related to MetalB, I'd be happy to answer.